Now, let's get to today and my guests to do this discussion uh, for the first segment. And this is between now and, <clears throat> and um, 1030. And my guest for this segment, Abdul Malik Kukuba, co-editor-in-chief of the New Crusading Guide newspaper. He's a regular panelist. I do not know yet. Um, he seemed to have been getting to know. Uh, I don't know if he's no or he's yes. Where, where are you? <laughs> <laughs> where are you? You'll get to know based on my submission. Okay. All right. Also here in the studio is Dr. Michael Peso white He's a um, senior research fellow, University of Ghana. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. You are an obvious no, and I've seen uh, some of your writings. Very ins insightful. Also here in the studio is Yao Bwabing Asamoa. He's a lawyer. He's MP and Director of Communications <coughs> of the New Patriotic Party. He certainly cannot a resounding belong to, yes. Cannot belong to no. <laughs> yes. A resounding yes. Thank you. Also here in the studio is Justice Strem Sai. He's lecturer, Gimpa Faculty of Law. He's also been writing quite profusely and educating the public on the subject. He is a definite setting, no campaigner. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Right. So if I may uh, start with uh, Justice Sai, but bef we start, let's, let's start from Parliament. You know, in, on the 29th of June or July, this matter first came up in the House where there was debate, very, very engaging debate. And the MPs, you know, contributed extensively. And the NDC, clearly, in Parliament, was for this. You know that now they have done a press conference and they take a different view. That's a national executive committee whipping everybody in line. The chiefs, National House of Chiefs, have also waded in. Of course, there are several civil society organizations also who think otherwise. Now, this is what happened in Parliament. Let's have a foretaste of that. Obi Amwa, who began the discussion in Parliament. Let's listen to him. We as political parties, it will be to our benefit that we ensure that we get a yes vote because we want to sponsor candidates for these elections. Now, if you go to them now, without amending, the political parties may, may be lukewarm because you haven't taken that decision to elect MMDC. So why are you coming to us that whether we should be involved or not? It's not for us to decide that it should be on partisan basis. If they should be elected, it's the people who should decide. But we have been given the power. Why not? We have been given the power under 2431 that once we amend it, because it's not entrenched, then the entrenched part is the work of the, the electorate under the referendum. Every single political party must have an interest in all these elections. The fact that we don't have party colors doesn't mean we don't have an interest. In fact, it would be hypocritical not to have an interest. Mr. Speaker, and that is why we must go by this step first. First of all, we must remove the power of the president. We must accept the offer by the president so we give power back to the people. We are conduit today. We are conduit. If, Mr. Speaker, if we don't all support this bill, what we are doing is that we are standing, we are standing against the people because we are refusing. The president wants to give power to the people. He can't give it directly, and we are refusing. <laughs> we do not find the amendment to Article 2431 alone is sufficient and adequate. It needs to be done comprehensively with other provisions of 243, and it must work through the same elaborate constitutional process defined in Article 291 of the Constitution. And Mr. Speaker, let the Ghanaian people be told that nobody on this side or in the NDC is against the elective principle of MMDCs. What we have said is that further engage or consult or we will help you give a terminal keys to this proposed constitutional amendment by refusing not to go with you. It lies within our right. But we should be looking at 
deeper accountability. And Mr. Speaker, this will also help resolve the conflict, the conflict between DCs and MPs. When they are your office now, they can also go and run for district chief executive, and that may minimize the conflict. And to state without any equivocation that the minority supports the attempt to have district assemblies or district chief executives elected. This is a matter that is not only limited to the 2000 and 2016 manifestos of the NLPP, but engaged the minority, the NDC, in deep thought and consideration because of the ramifications of such amendments. To show our commitment, to show our commitment that we are committed to both elections and also elections on partisan basis. If we don't amend 248 and we go and then we subsequently amend by deletion 553, we will still not be able to carry out elections on the basis of political party sponsoring candidate at district assemblies. That is not possible. Because 248 will still stand in the way of file political parties participating in sponsoring candidates at the district assembly. So Mr. Speaker, that is the argument. So whilst I agree that we could start with 243, we could start with 243, but then also, if we are committed to political parties participating, let's add 248 at this stage to the process before we even go to the referendum. Oh, I think I'd rather start this way. This is, this is how you came, uh, the, the debate started in Parliament, and you are in Parliament. Um, first of all, as you listen to the honourable members debating, you'd hear Obi Amwa suggest, and then you hear Joe Gatte also suggest, and actually state emphatically that the president wants to give the people the power to elect their DCEs, MMDCEs, but the parliamentarians are standing in the way of doing so if they don't go for a referendum. Do you gather that this is where the mislabeling and misinformation began? Uh, thank you very much, Samson. Thank you to your viewers this morning. If you use the word mislabeling, then I'm happy. Because it would mean that there isn't a fundamental difficulty about what we have to do. It's rather the way it's being put. Then it means that in principle, what we are pursuing is the right thing to do. The president has been saying, vote yes, so you can elect your DCs. Yes. And this is how, even in parliament, the discussion began. Because in and Parliament, that was wrong, right? the drift was that do 553, uh, 553 first. That was the drift. Mm. Do 553 first to give meaning to 2431. And what arguments were being made on the majority side, Obi Amua, Joe Gatti, and others, was that let us rather do 2431, because that is within our jurisdiction. And that will send a clear signal to the people out there, mm. that we are committed. The government and the political party are committed to that process. Mm. Then the people, based on that commitment, can then change 553. Five, five, OK, so we'll get to the substance. Yes. But this is just the aspect which has led the NCC yeah. last week to come out yeah. to give clarification yes. that when you are going on December 17 to the polls, yeah. you are not voting yes so your DC or MC can be elected. No, That's no, not no, what no, it no. is. Absolutely not. But initially, that is what was going on. And the question I'm asking is, mm -hmm. the, the misconception and the confusion began from the House. Not really. Not really? No, no, not really. What, the House, when Joe Gatti said, mm. the president wants to give the people the power yeah. to elect their DCs. Yes. And we are preventing that if we don't allow a referendum. No. What, what did he mean? No, no. Joe Gatti at stake in the House mm. was whether or not we'll get a majority, which includes the NDC, to pass 2431. <coughs> and that is what he was arguing for. Okay. And as long as 
the minority stands in the way of the passage of 2431, we cannot progress to a referendum okay. where the people will then bring in the party. So he was arguing that it is in the interest of the parties in parliament to pass 2431 in order to free the people to proceed to amend 553 okay. and enable the very same parties in parliament to participate. Okay. That was the argument he was making. And 2431 of the constitution says, mm -hmm. there shall be a district chief executive for every dis district who shall be appointed by the president with the prior approval of not less than two-thirds majority of members of the assembly present and voting at the meeting. Yeah. This is what you need to make MMDCs elective. Is correct. that correct? Correct. Okay. Once the president gives out his power, 2431, and it is within the jurisdiction of parliament, then MMDCs will also be elected, okay. but on a personal individual right ballot. how far have you gone with this process that you started debating Two uh, yes on the on the 29th july we are done yeah you are we done are with done. it no we haven't voted yet okay all that is left is for the speaker to put the question the debate has been done the arguments have been made so where parliament is now is to the speaker to ask do you approve and then we vote when is he going to ask that thursday we it's been scheduled twice okay but i believe that uh, let's be real let's face it whatever is happening in public impacts what happens in parliament okay so to the extent that something that the ndc appeared to be focused on and and throughout the roadmap consultations to the point where it popped up in parliament they were even in parliament arguing that we should have been dealing more 55 3 than yes. otherwise mm -hmm. now we have a situation where the national party uh, then say something else. Mm. That necessarily uh, engages... Some of the NDC MPs insisted mm. that you should do your job first by taking away the power from the president before you go to a referendum. They were not opposed to the referendum. They yeah. said, we need you to take away the president's power, which yeah. you, the members of parliament, yeah. have the power to do. to do. When you take away that power, yeah. the MMDCs have become elective. Yes. But... To make it partisan, mm. you have to go to a, a referendum. Correct. You wanted to go to a referendum before you come to no, parliament. No, 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 not at all. Okay. Not at all. Okay. You see, that is where the real misconception arises. Mm. Not at all. The NDC in parliament felt that if we didn't tie the two together, mm. we would actually get approval to elect MMDCs and renege on the referendum. <laughs> Okay. Their worry was that we were reading on the referendum. They had fears. Yes, they had fears. That you would not make it faster. Exactly. Because they thought that once the president let go and other provisions were not then amended, mm. including 55.3, <coughs> then we would have our cake and be eating it and to their exclusion. Okay. So, so they were insisting that if we are going to do 2431 now, tell us what you are going to do about 55.3. That was part okay. of so the let's, argument. Let's in get Parliament. a bit of clarity on that. Let's mm. hear Obi Amwa again. Mm. Because it does appear then at the time that Obi Amwa mm. was supporting the minority. Let, mm. Let's hear yeah. him again. Obi Amwa. Let's hear Obi Amwa. We as political parties, it will be to our benefit that we ensure that we get a yes vote because we want to sponsor candidates for these elections. Now, if you go to them now, without amending, the political parties may, may be lukewarm because you haven't taken that decision to elect MMDC. So why are you coming to us that whether we should be involved or not? It's not for us to decide that it should be on partisan basis. If they should be elected, it's the people who should decide. But we have been given the power. We have been given the power under 2431 that once we amend it because it's not entrenched. Then the exchange part is the work of the, the electorate under the referendum. Mm. We were, the majority was being asked questions. Why are you here and not telling us exactly what will happen to 55 3? Mm. Because if we do this, we want 55 3 to happen. You understand? This is the innate. So he was saying yes. you should show commitment first by amending and removing the president's power. Correct. Then MMDCs have become elected. Elected. Then, then we whether they then become partisan or not, you go to the people. Then we can go to the people. And okay. we go to the people with credibility. Mm. Because we go to the people and tell them that we have done what we need to do. Mm. Now, 
do it and get involved. Okay. Then you have something to show the people. Right. But you can't go to the people first and, and say, do this, when there's no basis mm. for it. He was also saying that mm. that is an incentive for the political parties. Mm. Because once you do this, mm. they, because they, all the political parties, you are going to sponsor par, uh, mm. candidates, mm. you will benefit. Mm. Therefore, you will campaign for a yes vote. Yes, you see, okay. uh, let me say something here. The issues that have come up are genuinely against political parties. But the question has taken 62 years of independence. How many of those years have political parties participated? Okay, we'll go there right away. Uh, now, Justice, you have also been writing and seeking to educate about what has become the misconception. Um, from listening to the members in parliament, are they the ones who began all of it, or you feel that it is mischief? Because we have heard people suggest that it's mischief, and that it was the government which is seeking a yes. That's why you have the president actually saying, vote yes so your, your MMDCs will be elected, when in fact, that is not the truth. Yeah, thank you. See, for every political project, there are two things. What the politicians want, and then what the people want. Sometimes what the politicians want will, will coincide with what the people want. When those times come up, you don't see things like this happening. What is happening is as simple as this. The politicians want something. The people want some other thing. Now, the politicians need, in this instance, the people to agree <coughs> with what they want. And the people are becoming alert and not agreeing to what the politicians want. Let me explain. There is actually no inherent link between Article 2, uh, 2431, which says that a MMDC should be appointed, and Article 553, which says that uh, local government elections should be done apolitical. There's no inherent link. The only link we are having here is because the politicians are connecting the two. It, you don't need a referendum to make MMDC electable. You don't need a referendum. So the people want MMC, MMDCE to be what? Elected. Once you want to do what the people want, you can do that in parliament without all this challenge. The problem here is that some way, somehow, the politicians seem to want to give the people what they want, but give them in a way that they can get their way. I mean, the politicians can get their way. The thing about local government elections or local government, everywhere you go in the world, where they are not political, okay, where they are not based on political parties, local governments become stronger and they entrench democracy. If you go to um, some states in Canada, in the US, where they are not elected on partisan basis, they are very accountable to the people. And that is the purpose of what the people are asking. The people are saying that, look, we want these, uh, the MMDCE to be held accountable to us. We don't want them to be appointed and be you know, uh, accountable to the president up in Accra while we are here. So that when they misbehave, we can find our own ways of removing them. That is what the people are looking for. Now, the question is, when you take 245 appoint, appointment positions from the president, you have hurt him. You have hurt not just the president, you have hurt the political parties. Because this is the reward you know, basis for all political parties. When they win power, that is where you reward all the persons that have campaigned for you. So the politician is faced with a dilemma. It's a simple question. If we shut off this massive reward you know, vehicle, what happens to us? OK, so you are proceeding to the substantive matter. Uh, yes, we know, for example, that at the start, the NPP, through its uh, uh, general secretary, had come to announce that the party was against it, that high-ranking members of the party were against election of MMDCs. Precisely. But of course, um, you know how the parties work. They'll use a party whip. Uh, so as, far, as, as in October, I can show you what he said. As in October, this is what um, um, John yeah, Boedu had said. I'm asking him a question. Okay. He's saying, because you are saying, John. yes, you are saying that. I think he's clarified his position. Um, OK, that's OK. Mm. You, you are saying that it is the politicians who want to delimit what they want to give 
the people. Precisely. The people want MMDCs to be elected, but it is not exactly that they want them to be elected on a partisan basis. Precisely. Okay, thankfully, you were part <coughs> of the Constitution Review Commission's work. What you are saying is contrary to the work that the Constitution Review Commission did. That reading the report of the Constitution uh, uh, Review Commission, there was an equal majority, equal number of people who wanted it partisan and those who wanted it nonpartisan. And even though the commission advised that the nonpartisan is the best, they ended with this recommendation. And they said that uh, the commission recommends, uh, there was, the recommendation was that at some time, some time, Parliament should amend the 243 to allow for partisan MMDC elections. So how do you now justify what you're saying? Something you and I, are, I mean, we are, we are lawyers. Mm. When there is a tie, assuming that there was even a 50-50 presentation, when there is a tie as to what to change, I think the position is that what it should remain. So it doesn't mean that the people are calling for that change. Now, the question, if you read the, the, the report carefully. This is what they, this is what they said, 474. They said, the commission recommends the amendment of Article 248 to empower Parliament at any time in the future to make provision for partisan elections at the district and sub-district levels. Yes, but, but the commission recommended clearly that you cannot do this unless you make fundamental changes to the local government system. What are some of the changes they mentioned? They said, look, let's regulate even the political parties so that they do not use the way they select their leaders and their reps in the national election to influence local government. The point they are trying to make is that they do not want a situation where what is happening at the national level will be replicated at the local government level. So good, it's good to have partisan politics. But when you have a partisan political system which has no accountability to the people, then there is a problem. So if you read the Constitution Reviews Commission, I mean, they rejected it and gave about five points of, of I mean, reasons mm. to say that we are not in support of this. We are not taking just the, 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 the submission into account. We are doing international comparative analysis. They did a historical analysis of what has been happening and the results, and even the, 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 the analysis of what the, the, the commi committee of experts did on, 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 on the 1992 constitution. The point is as simple as this. Why are we afraid? I mean, the people are speaking all over the place. You can hear them. And even some members of parliament, some politicians are saying that, look, let's stop this thing and reconsider it. But it also brings up one important thing. What level of consultation went into this you know, decision? You are going to conduct a referendum. That referendum is going to cost a lot of money taxpayers' money. It's going to cause a lot of tension, effort, resources. And the people are out there, and they don't even know the issue that they are voting on. Because the president, for instance, is saying, go and vote, what, yes, so that you have MMDCs elected. Is that the issue? Obviously not. Obviously not. He says it's a slip, he says it's a slip well, on the part of the president. That yeah, is, it's only a one-off slip, yeah. so you can allow Let's that. leave out the president. Mm. Yeah. There are posters going around campaigning that vote yes, and when you vote yes, you have MMDCs you know, elected. When the question is not about letting MMDC elected. So there is, like I said, there is a conflict between what the politicians want and what the people want. Okay. And there is this deliberate yeah. effort, because it, it, all of this cannot be slips. Okay. I mean, so you, you hold on together. briefly, I'll, 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 I'll return to you. <coughs> but you see, once again, I refer to the Constitution Review Commission's work to let you know that it's not exactly the point that it is the politicians who have a certain desire and want to impose it on you, the let people. Me, no, hold on. Let me tell you the composition. What's, what happens when the commission is taking uh, submissions? It is the politicians who mobilize people to even attend the, the, the commission hearings. I mean, <laughs> I have been, I mean, I mean, I, in, no, I mean, if you are doing analysis, research, research work, your selection <laughs> of, of, of people will go into the, 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 the quality of the data. Really so, right. and you know how these things work. Okay. okay. Like people All right. Across Thank the you. Country to meet yeah, yes. People. Yes. Um, now, now. <laughs> That's Doc, yeah. can we begin from here? What the NDC has done, that's clearly 
does not work for their credibility, does it? Or it rather does. That in Parliament, they endorse this. And in fact, outside Parliament, outside Parliament, they hold meetings under IDEC and they endorse it. And all of a sudden, they have found 101 reasons why people should go and vote no. Let's listen to one of the NDC's rep at uh, one of these IDEC meetings and what he had to say on behalf of the General Secretary of the NDC and tell us whether there's a credibility deficit with the NDC. You that see, has been. this is the confusion that the government is deliberately introducing. They deliberate, and their supporters, they deliberately confuse the issue of electing DCs with making the district assembly system partisan. Article 553, which you are voting on, simply says that parties can sponsor uh, candidates to district level elections. It doesn't say that we should, parties can sponsor candidates, can sponsor DCs. I represent the National Democratic Congress, uh, most especially the General Secretary, Honorable Johnson Asedu in Ketia. This is one of the topics, one of the few topics that both the NDC and the NPP seem to be in agreement. So I will not want to, <laughs> I will not want to talk too much about the advantages of having a multi-party election at the local assemblies. However, our concern as a National Democratic Congress is that, yes, we are for a referendum to have a multi-party election. But if we are all interested in the outcome of the referendum, and we are all asking our members to go for a yes, we should also be interested in the processes leading to the referendum. The Electoral Commission and its activities cannot be excluded from this process. Not too long ago, we had one referendum which decided the creation of new regions. And we believe as a party, and we still strongly hold the view that the processes were compromised, the elections was compromised. The process with regards to registration of members, exhibition of voter register, and the conduct of the election itself is very critical to this process. So we are urging all the stakeholders here that let us not only be interested in the outcome of the referendum, we should also be interested in ensuring that the processes leading to the outcome of the referendum are free and fair. All right, so that's uh, Adam Agbana, who is the deputy youth organizer. And on this occasion, he was very clear that he was speaking for and on behalf of the NDC's national organizer secretary secretary yeah secretary does it create credibility problems people are saying how can you behave this way well i don't think so at all i don't think it creates credibility crisis for for the ndc um adam being the youth deputy youth organizer did not just make that statement he continued to make other statements and i think the statement he emphasized the most in the short clip that played is that we should be interested in the processes and I think that, for me, is more fundamental. Mm. Than for our pur purposes of this discussion, the most important part is the unequivocal endorsement of the National Democratic Congress at the time. Endorsement of Multi -party. partisan, yes, you know, district he, assembly. He, he made that statement, mm. and we heard him. Right, but he proceeded further to say that we should also be very interested in the processes. And I think there must be a fundamental reason why he was emphasizing the processes. And one of that could be that as we engage, we will learn. New knowledge will emerge. New insights will be obtained. And all those insights will lead us to relaxing our fixated positions and begin to reshape the direction of the policy. So I don't think that there is an issue of credibility here at all. Fundamentally, though, we need to ask ourselves, I mean, for me as a po political scientist uh, with a policy background, I ask myself, what problem are we trying to solve? Mm -hmm. Because the primary We're objective, trying to solve winner takes all. The, the, the primary the objective, argument is that when you do it this way, 
minority parties can also win some power at the local level. So it will not be if MPP has one power, MPP has everything. Okay. <clears throat> so from the debates, what I have gleaned from the debate is that we want to reduce the overbearing powers and influence of the president at the local level. That is one. Number one. Number two, we also want to use the parties to generate enthusiasm at the local level. And then number three, we want to bring accountability and answerability at the local level. Right. That is all good. Mm. The follow-up question, however, is, is the solution being put forward a solution that can address these problems adequately? Thus, electing MMDCs on partisan lines mm. necessarily solve these problems. Yeah. Or it exactly now, let's, let's be clear. It's not just about MMDCs. And, uh, and because, assembly members. Yeah, yes. assembly members and units committee members. Very well. yeah. mm -hmm. Does it necessarily solve this problem? And I don't think so. And I'll give you reasons why. Um, the NDC's position, as has been articulated by the national chairman recently, is not inconsistent with the position that the minority leader, for instance, articulated in parliament. The minority leader in parliament said the NDC supports the elective principle of MMDCs, and I think that is basically the same position. As of today, what the NDC is saying is that we are not against the people of Ghana electing assembly members as they always do, and we are not against the people of Ghana electing MMDCs. What we have a problem with is the attempt to make the election of assembly members and the MMDCs partisan. That is what the NDC's position is. The, MM, the, N, the NDC is simply saying that we don't want you to bring the parties to the local level election for a number of reasons. One, I mean, several CSOs in this country have cried about the dangers inherent in winner-takes-all. Mm. The winner-takes-all politics in this country does not manufacture itself. It is a product of the competitive multi-party election system. <coughs> Unfortunately for us, because of the requirement of 50% plus one, at the presidential election level, Ghanaian electorates have basically been pushed into two camps. So invariably, the smaller parties continue to die. So you have a situation where now you have only two dominant parties. What it therefore means is that if you export this particular game down to the MMDCs, you are going to have a situation where in every district, people are basically going to take positions on party lines. And I think that in the majority of countries in, in the world, where local government is practiced and is most effective and productive. Many countries opted for a non-partisan for a number of reasons. People want to be able to walk into their local government settings and have problems solved without wearing the party tag. And I have listened to a number of assemblymen who say, look, everybody in this area knows that I'm an NDC person or I'm an MPP person. But when I am an assemblyman, they know that I'm not NDC or MPP assemblyman. I am an assemblyman. So they are happy to do what? Come around, discuss the problems with me, and we solve it. So we need to keep in mind that if we agree that political parties at the national level have inherently created a certain problem that excludes a certain section or a certain segment of the society from participation and distribution, redistribution of national resources, then there is a much bigger danger if we export that particular project downwards. And the dangers are many. One of the things that if we do this partisan thing at the district level, we will encounter is, based on our voting pattern in this country, NDC had always won the Volta region. The MPP had always won Ashanti region. I hope back to that. I hope you if, you begin, if you begin to elect MMDCs and assembly members on partisan lines, what we are going to ha do, ha end up happening is that in the future, when NDC is in office, there is a likelihood that a large majority of DCEs in Ashanti region will be what? MPP members. And when NDC comes to power in 2020. So that's the solution groups no, no, like no, IDEC I'm are just, pushing. I'm just, so so uh, winner takes all is being resolved. No, 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 no. <laughs> winner takes all. What mm. is your understanding of winner takes all, by the way? Winner takes all is being escalated and exacerbated. How? How because. How do you have a region and consistently you have elections and the outcome of election is that only one dominant political party gets to have everything 
All other political parties in that region do not matter. And then you say that you have resolved winner takes all. The fact that you have NDC at the national level and you have MPP at Ashanti region does not mean that you have resolved winner takes all. That is crazy. You know why? The president sitting at the national level can deprive the DCE and that district of resources, largely because they did not vote for his party or vote for his DCEs. The DCEs over there in, in the other region who do not belong to the president's party can also sabotage the president. I mean, you can imagine the president of, let's say we have that system now. And, and we, we are being party. assured that there will be laws and regulations no, 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 to I check think, all I of these things. I think that we must move beyond speculative assurances. Something that are a number of things we need to ask ourselves. Is this the only option available to us as a country? Is the option of electing MMDCEs through the partisan vehicle the only one available to us? Why do we want to be now pitch families against families, chiefs against chiefs, church members against church members, <coughs> local members against local members on partisan lines? When we know that at the national level, this thing is of a much bigger problem. They say if, this is the reality, so simply endorse it, bless it. Well, whose reality is, is it that? The reality. No, no, that, no, no, there's nothing like that. As, like, no, 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 no. as we speak, the parties are engaged in these elections Something. anyway. In the postmodern world, there's mm. nothing like the reality. Whose reality is that? The very reason why we are discussing this is because there is nothing like the reality. There may be multiple realities, and it is true continuous conversation that we can mm. come to a certain <coughs> consensus okay. on what we think exactly the problem is. All right, so but, you. Will you catch your breath? I will come back. Uh, let's go to Kwekubako. And uh, <clears throat> you, <clears throat> you made a statement that I have referred to and I have asked myself whether or not you belong to a yes or no. I have asked you this morning and you have been reluctant to say you are yes or no and that as you wait, when you are done, we will get to know whether you are yes or you are no or you are neither. Uh, and so on and so forth. So I was just uh, going to the statement that you uh, made and then ask you whether by explaining that statement we could get a better and clearer picture of where exactly uh, you stand. Um, so you said, you said, okay, uh, just a second. All right. Mm. Right, right, right. Um, this is delaying, but I could just ask you to go ahead. You, you, you didn't <coughs> seem to have a clear position expressed. Uh, this is what you said. You said that you were wishing that the referendum would be deferred. I don't know whether, this is what you said. You, you wish that the referendum would be deferred. I don't know whether it's too late to abandon the project. My whole sense is that it's not going to come on. They won't give us the two thirds. What's your point? Um, you are for yes, but because you think you can't get yes, it should be deferred, see, abandoned. You'll be surprised that this is one issue that I have been consistently challenged on very personal view and I'm being very honest with you and if you permit me I would want to go a little bit back not I wouldn't be protracted in terms of the delivery there mm. proud to I have to get back to Yao to do his substantive and I'm not actually allowed no, you shouldn't do, have started yeah. you go ahead, go ahead. There. you should have asked mm. me to start from you there. go ahead because go ahead. that kind of thing but I'll tell yeah. you something from 1998 up to 2000, I was part of those who advocated for MMDCs to be elected by universal adult suffrage as well as on partisan grounds. Indeed, most of the political parties, maybe with the exception of the NDC, captured some of those things in their manifestos. The NPP 1996 manifesto was there, 2000 it was there. 2008 it was there even more explicit now i've noticed something quite interesting with the 2016 one if i'm wrong uh, y'all can correct me the 2016 mpp manifesto i thought i saw only them pointing to universal adult suffrage as the basis for electing mmdc's all of them committed to election 
but they never said it will be partisan. Yes. And they never said it will not be partisan. Yes. But the point, the significant point I'm making is that proud, the previous manifestos, they were sharp on it. They were categorical. They just didn't talk about elections, but said elections on partisan basis. It, it appears 2016 they omitted. Maybe it was inadvertent. I'm not too sure. But whatever it Certainly is. Certainly it's not inadvertent. Yes, it, but here we are now. It was thought through. Can yeah, but here we are now. We are discussing the two together. The universal adult suffrage, that is partisanship. The two four three one, mm. as well as the fifty three three, which is partisanship. So they are together. That's why I'm making the point I'm okay. making. I have travelled a certain journey. Until recently, I was for no. And. I was for no because I was looking at the Security and Intelligence Act in terms of our architecture. And I was worried that if we were to elect these DCs, MMDCs, and they were chairpersons of those Dicec. subsidiary DICEC and things, it could create some problems. Mm -hmm. Until some member of parliament called my attention to the fact that there are consequential amendments, amendments which would capture the Security and Intelligence Act and those paragraphs or portions will be subject to amendment. Okay, so that for clarity, the MMDCs, mm -hmm. if we get to make them partisan, will no longer be the heads of the security That's the drift I was giving. Committees. They may be members, but they may not be chairpersons. Okay. And I even told the person that, well, that's something I hadn't thought of. Mm -hmm. Would I thought I should have adverted my mind to. Okay. Because it doesn't it is, work to have, say, an NDC district uh, uh, DC to be the chair because they have to report to the president. Yes, and then the Regional Security Council, District Security Council, then the National Security Council. Okay. So those arguments came in and I realized that well I hadn't done a deeper thinking of the, on the issue. So I decided that well if those amendments would be done, in any case those people will still be members of the security committees. Mm. So if you are talking of total confidentiality, you may not have taken away the wrecks or threat entirely. Okay, but I was prepared to drift so forward. So senior police officers would take over. Exactly, man. That's what I was told. Okay. That, that kind of structure. And, and we are looking to guarantee that the senior police officers will, will not have party loyalties. Well, well, but we know some of them have, but we can't do anything about that immediately. <laughs> unless they show their character. That defeats the argument. No, 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 wait. Uh, unless they show their conduct, okay. but in their conduct and actions mm. that they are being partisan. After all the civil servants who tell you they don't vote exactly. or they don't have party affiliations. Exactly. And, and I'm not going for the illusion. Mm. I'm just staying realistic. Mm. And I'm saying that unless your conduct and actions betray that code of service, then nobody can touch you because they suspect you are party A or party B. We can't use suspicion as a basis to take action against anybody. Right. So one has, I myself have been inconsistent relative to this challenging Okay. Proposition. And so I you want have to come from a no to yes? Yes. Okay. And now, because of some of the issues that you've raised here, the breach, in my candid opinion, of fate on the part of the NDC, and other things happen. Look at even the National House of Chiefs mm. and the things going on there. I know it may be too late to defer this whole project. When I say the project, I mean the two sides mm. put in one. Both 2431. And at 53.3. 55. We, we don't, 55 need, we don't need to touch 55.3, really. Uh, well, that's your How opinion. You <laughs> and that's <laughs> different realities are, no, is what please. you tell us. You are, you are entitled to that. Yes. <laughs> what happened in Parliament showed that both sides of the divide had decided that this should be seen as an integrative proposition. And you just said that Arun Edrus said something different. Let me quote what he said mm. in the Hansard for you. This is Arun Edrus. This is uh, July 29th, 2019. Right. Column, it starts from column 15519. One, five, one, it says, if you come to article 53, 553, it is not for nothing that the Constitution provides two walkways. If you are amending an entrenched provision, go to the people through a referendum. The referendum question has not been decided. So the question we would pose is, assuming you go to the referendum and it fails, what happens to this amendment that you are carrying out? Because sovereignty resides in the people. The people may decide otherwise, and you cannot determine it. 
So the support of those of us on this side of the house is conditional to the fact that the DCEs should be elected. But they should be elected on partisan lines. Mm. That's the minority leader. Okay. Then he goes on to talk about the fact that parties are already involved. And right. says, Mr. Speaker, the pretense must end. All of us here know that clandestinely, political parties support district assembly elections in Ghana. It is provided in the Constitutional Review Report, and I can read portions of it, mm. which I think we are alluding to. Yeah. So, Mr. Speaker, two principles amend the Constitution. Allow for popular election of DCEs, but do it on the principles of partisanship. We will support that. Without that, it may be different, difficult to support it. Right. Mama, Mama Yariga said virtually the almost, same thing. Almost, almost, almost all of them. Uh, with the exception of uh, Inu Safuseni. That, that was then. No, uh, yeah. ABA yeah. Fuseni. That was then. That was Inu Safuseni. Yes, Inu Safuseni. That was then. They were the same. We are okay. discussing what so, the so wait. So wait. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Yes, Koku. And my brother. So your point is. I have a no. Your point is that. No, I'm coming. If the party changes their view. No. Uh, and they, they are, wave they, their parliamentarians. They are intending to change their view. But yeah. the, view, the, the review, if mm. it is review, mm. comes with a certain deficit. Sincerity, honesty. Deficit. But everybody changes their mind all the time. I watched you on Good Morning Ghana the last time you said you, were not, told you, you were not comfortable with the, with the report. Times. Yes, so then, no, no. so it's all about credibility. I'm not, every I'm, human being and every institution, depending on what information is available to you at any given point, uh, I is entitled to no, change no, no, your right. yeah, Go ahead. It's okay. But that's okay. So quickly. So yeah. Yeah. Mm. I'm talking here of a major political party. That should it make that mistake. And I meant. Go right ahead. Go right ahead. No, but he's canvassing the other side of the argument to you that some say this is rather being sincere and credible and going with the people. If we have discovered that the people somewhat Absolutely. overwhelmingly don't want this, we should rather do what the people want. <laughs> we are here. Mm -hmm. Sooner than later, mm -hmm. we'll be tackling an issue and I will check them, checkmate them on this consistency no, principle. No problem. Okay. But I want to be allowed to do my submission. Right. Quickly. Right. right. Yeah. I said the insincerity, the dishonesty that has informed the NDC's review gets my boat. Same thing is happening even on the level of National House of Chiefs. We don't see what is going on there. There's one chief, uh, Osajifu Yaojebi, who says that the statement as issued um, was, not, was not endorsed. Should we take his word? Or we should take the statement signed by the two, the president and the vice. The controversy itself is demeaning mm. and undermines the integrity of that whole institution. But in the meantime, it's, what should we go with? I don't know what to go with. It just tells me, no, let me tell you honestly, because I haven't done the checks to find out, because they have a secretariat, they have procedures they follow. If I want to do a determination, I would want to do a proper set checks on those things and not sit here and say we, what we I feel like. We have had many times when in parliament, at the committee level and things, they agree on things, and then Something. some of them come Something. here to talk to us. We, we show them what the document is and tell them that See, we, the they must stick uh, to the official. The, the, the answer direct to you is a house, it's a document, a very important document. That's this not in doubt. House of That's not in doubt. I have not heard the minority leader or any of them talking. Indeed, the party leadership that met, some of them were on your station and other stations, actually did not even know that they, their own parliamentary wing had committed them to this, showing that the party itself had not constructively engaged each other. That's the point I'm making. Okay. That's a big party. Mm. And we shouldn't just gloss over it. But the point I'm making, let me tell you something. The explanations, the reasons that come as to why we shouldn't allow party politics or multi-partism at the local level, based on the PNDC uh, structure that we got in 1988-87, 87-88, it worries me. There's a certain phobia. They've turned party politics into a phobia. There's an attack on multipartism and party politics. And that's what actually led to the PNDC adopting the structure. I'm sure you know about this book, the blue book. Mm. Read it. Find out the reasons that were given. At that point in time, many of us who were part of the Democratic campaign oppose them. The same arguments were made by the Unigov proponents. Same arguments were made, interestingly, by even the one-party proponents. 
Okay, except that they had a party in there. Who were those <laughs> against Unigov? Unigov, I yeah. was one of them. Yeah. The Ghana Bar Association, the NUCS, National Union of Ghana Students, mm. the Professional Bodies Association, and many other groups. Okay. The chiefs were for Unigov, mm. mainly, because they said Unigov was going to bring the traditional governance system into being. So it's not surprising that they would take a decision to support... But I said, you to see, support, what, what worries to support me, a no vote. What worries me mm. is that we have a recycle of that anti-party, anti-multipartism argument as the basis for retaining what had been put in there. Okay. And we are told that multipartism mm. has virtually destroyed the top. Mm. And I'm sure you, mean, you know what I mean by the top. Yeah. The superstructure, mm. the political superstructure. Yeah. Ah. See, I, I, so, I find it so difficult. If other convincing reasons could be brought on bear, perhaps they can get me to shift. But when this recycled, anti-party, anti-multipartism arguments is brought to bear. Something we rejected. Otherwise, there's no need to have this multipartism at the top. Mm. We might as well yeah. go back for Unigov <laughs> for a no-party system. When the commission, no, when no, the commission no, went through no, the process, this, this are, these are some of the things they said. They said that the commission, however, observes that where local elections are held on partisan basis, nomination rules determined and deployed by national parties can serve as impediments to accountability. It also weakens local government systems. The, the commission observes that as a result of corruption in Ghana's body politic, partisan politics in local elections may lead to the erosion of popular support for local assembly. The commission observes with concern that in jurisdictions where political parties play a role in the elections at the local level, without clear rules that stipulate the inclusion of certain disadvantage or minority segments Oops. of society. Yeah. The system may easily engender dominance by majority groups, more powerful social groups, and persons who have enough money to spread around for the purposes of attracting votes. There, there's a lot more they had to say as he had uh, yes. sought to I've seen all lead that. us through first. Mm. And what did the government white paper say? The government white paper said, look, let's jettison the MMDCs coming on this way Let's rather have the president nominate five and present them yes. to the people to vote on yes. them. But I'm saying, are you telling me mm. that the monetization, the threat of monetization or the corruption, threat of corruption of the political superstructure is not already in the lower structure? Is that what you are telling me? Okay, so hold on briefly. Now, yeah. It's an illusion. Uh, yeah, yeah, let's go to your substantive points now and let me just use one observation by an assembly member according to Suleiman Abraima to let you answer uh, look at it this way he says this is what the gentleman who is a, an an MC and going to contest again told him he said Masa forget about this party talk look we all know which party who belongs to but because the contest is not openly NDC MPP, there is calm. Look, if it was MPP NDC openly, I can't tell you how many local fighting will be there. Campaign teams will clash all the time, and the campaign will be menya. Masa, they should leave us alone. <clears throat> me, I am MPP man, but after elections, everyone calls me assemblyman, not MPP assemblyman. When NDC people in the village have problems, they come to me as assemblyman. <coughs> no one thinks of MPP and NDC when we have problems to solve in our community. That the assemblyman has to lead. When I organize communal labor, both NDC and MPP people come. If I am an MPP assemblyman, NDC people will say that they don't come to help my party popular, uh, to be popular in, in here and so on and so forth. Why do you support? Why do you support yes? <laughs> Is that assumption? <laughs> Nobody knows his uh, he, he says they know. Yes. Yes. They know. So what's the difference? They know. We should distinguish. We should distinguish. Let us speak. Let us speak. Let us speak. Politicians or political parties? Member of parliament. Is the problem politicians or political parties? Are the people going for elections at this state level politicians? Are the executives who lead this party politicians? Are we more comfortable with the executive leading the country as politicians than political parties partnering them? Has that succeeded? Mm. You see, this thing, there's been consultation for several years, even formally from 2011, CRC, mm. Mm. and then a roadmap from 2017 mm. to now, reading through to 2021. The roadmap is very clear. 
So there's been consultation of all facets. In Parliament, it was the NDC leadership who brought in 55 days, committed to it. So again, the question of the vote phase and the, and the overturning. Now, let's move to why you, yeah. you will vote yes. Um, I'll vote yes. If, if, you, could, vote if yes. you could actually vote no. <laughs> I'll vote yes because, uh, one, I think the worst part of our history have been when there were no political parties. Really? Yes. Look at the champion years. They were the executive. They were politicians. They controlled legislative, judicial, everything, and ended up from what they took over to the revolution on the way we had Kalabuli. Hmm? The revolutionary years. That's an example to give. Oh, yeah, the revolutionary years. We are not in those days. Please, please, the revolutionary years. There were no parties. Mm. We ended up with an economy which became excessively liberalized. Growth at the end was nothing to write home about. In fact, we exited with hippies. Political parties came in, right? <coughs> Out of the 62 years, 40 of them have been involved with political parties. But the political parties are now reacting to the constitutional frame that we're left with. But the constitutional frame is that whilst we are sharing power, mm. it excludes every party entirely once one party wins. Mm. What does that mean? It means that every party is now beginning to employ ways and means of staying in there permanently. Because if you go out, you are out. And those who are out are struggling to come back in at all costs. Because once you are out, you are out. What happens? It means that when you come in, you consolidate your space. You know that you have a maximum of probably eight years. Eh? You try to entrench yourself. So you find a situation where uh, uh, we are not accumulating serious capital. You refuse to continue what others did. You are bending the state to your needs until you are able to control the state effectively. Otherwise, you are going to lose out to the other group. When they come in, they will get rid of everything. Now, what we are saying is that if you vote yes, you create ownership. Winner takes all is the one which is the most important. Sorry, you said when who comes in, they get rid of everything. When a political party comes in, the tendency, one, in the transition, first of all, is to disregard all that has gone on before. Mm. If you are not, uh, 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 what do you call it? You virtually criminalize everything that has happened with your opponent. And that's a lot of waste, right? That is waste. Mm. It's sunk capital. You abandon the projects. You look to change their technical people, people mm. who have been trained and put in place. And why do you do them. that? Because it's a zero-sum game. Because you are now in charge and you want to get rid of everything that the other group did. Because otherwise, you, you yourself you are elect, not safe. When you, you elect the local level, level. Yes. Sorry. Sorry. Down, down Sorry. Please, because can I do the question? Please. Please. When, when, you, when, you, when, you, when you do, when you take this to the local level, you will improve and resolve that issue? The local level, taking it there, is what will break to the higher level. It will? <laughs> it will. <laughs> It will, because now the parties will be forced to engage. There will be competitive tolerance. The parties will own the processes. Mm. If there is a established a direction for the government through the parties at local level, all sides will be committed to it. There will be buy-in. We will finish the projects, because those projects would have at been the more, mutually At the agreed. more matured, for lack of a better expression, at the mm. more matured level, mm. at the national level, yes. in parliament, yes. is that what goes on? Is that what the electorate see, what you're talking about, or you are now thinking about we, we, to do, we work, doing those? We work together in parliament, but the majority naturally has the, uh, the overweening edge. What happens is that you're part of a government, so you ensure that whatever the government brings in passes. MPs right. who have disagreed with their party, yeah. either the party in government <coughs> or party in opposition, yeah. have virtually been thrown out of parliament. Because there is no incentive to agree or disagree except that if you disagree, you are rendering our common solidarity at risk. Okay. Because if you disagree and we go out, we are out. We are not in. So there is no incentive to disagree. The incentive is to stay in charge. You understand what I'm saying? Do you realize you are enforcing the no yes, argument? Yes, I mean, I think uh, that's no, why I've been quiet. No, no, no. Sorry, sorry, no, no, sorry. No, no. I'm yeah. saying that mm. if we elect at local level, the parties will all come together 
in the frame and think together. Mm. Why are we not doing that at the national level? Because, 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 mm. because, because you are taking all the power. You don't have no incentive to talk to anybody. Okay. Okay. So just a minute. Oh, let me oh, let uh, me Dr. Sorry, White, sorry. I'm sorry. Please, see, like see, see, see let that, me the argument mm. you are making, you are mm. going to continue with it. Mm. Let's listen to Ufosan Pofo mm. and then use your arguments to disagree with mm. him and let's see. Uh, Ufosan Pofo is the national chairman of the NDC and they held a press conference to say that uh, henceforth, this is the party's position. They are members of parliament. Everybody to stay in line. Let's listen to him and, what, and find out from Boabi and Samuel why his arguments are not tenable. At the meeting held last Thursday, the neck of the NDC affirmed our long-held position that MMDCs should be elected. We, however, took the view that the local governance system should remain non-partisan and that individual Individuals contest the elections, the disassembly elections, and unit committee elections on their own merits. We therefore decided to campaign for no vote at the referendum and to urge all Ghanaians to vote no at the referendum. It is our, it is our well considered view, and indeed that of well meaning Ghanaians, that the needless NDC MPP polarization at the national level should not be extended into the district assemblies and unit committees, which is what will happen if we vote to make the local government system partisan. The consequence of exporting this polarization to the district assemblies is that very soon, our vi very soon in our villages, there will be, there will be NDC communal labor day and MPP communal labor day. There will also be NDC markets and MPP markets, and so on and so forth. We of the NDC believe that all our towns and villages should have one communal labor day and one market day. And we can only achieve this by voting no in order to keep the cohesion of our towns and villages as it has been since the introduction of 1992 constitution intact. Okay. What he is saying mm. assumes that there will be no engagement. The engagement that is going on now, even at national level, is not inclusive. It is exclusive. And it is the exclusivity which is creating the situation of get in at all costs. It is driving the vigilantism, get in at all costs. It is driving the businesses we collapse, get in at all costs, build your own businesses. That exclusivity at national level is the problem. The winner takes all. It's a zero-sum game. He is assuming that when we vote, the zero-sum game will percolate downwards. That is not the case. Because others will come in. I am calling it what I, I say is a competitive tolerance. <coughs> you have to engage. And when you engage the lower parties and you decide on one thing, you will be committed to that thing. You will follow through on that thing. That thing will have a national interest. There will be buy-in across parties. And there will be better ownership of what we have as a nation. If we are engaging at the lower level on cross-party basis, it will percolate upstairs. And it will impact what we do upstairs. Because you will need to get alignment at the top before you descend your policy to the lower level. Mm. It will strengthen the parliamentary parties. Because they will have a basis for engaging and arguing that I want this for my people because my people want it. My mm. assembly is NDC. They are strongly serious about this social policy. Let's engage properly about it and see a win-win. In fact, it's a win-win situation. So you are dealing with a situation where you are breaking winner takes all mm. from the bottom up. Ozan Pofo says that you will be uh, expending a lot of money mm. because you will have how many MMDCs to elect primaries to run first and you have how many primaries for the assembly members and then the unit committee members. That, that is a huge amount yeah, of cost yeah, yeah. and then it will come with after the primaries the campaign and all of that and that that will that will influence the corruption even further yeah, what do you say yeah, about the that difficulties of some of is extrapolating are matters that are residual and consequential to this amendment but they are important. Okay. we can detect yes they are important you make laws against we them. will determine how it goes we've been discussing party, party the law presently is a prohibition years. it's not obeyed what is the guarantee that it will be obeyed? Why is it not obeyed? 
It oh. was sometimes there's a reverse interest. Okay. Not, it, it need not being obeyed. Okay. You are a lawyer. He said you are a lawyer. Said, you are a lawyer. You know that what is effectively that of the people. The voice of the people is the voice of God. It will rise above the law. Mm. And the utility an organization parties bring to electoral processes is what the current system is exploiting mm. behind the scenes. Okay. Because parties bring organization. Parties bring logistics. Parties bring material support. Parties bring financial support. Above all, parties bring coherence to policy positions. Okay. You are saying that we should elect MMBCs on their own. Elect assemblymen on their own. Elect unit committee members on their own. Everybody should come with this program. How do they determine the way forward? There is best practice elsewhere that has it as separate. But we must operate also within our situation mm. where we adapt best practice to suit ourselves and realize that a large majority of our people okay. are not really policy engaged mm. because of issues to do with uh, literacy levels and other matters. So essentially... Presently, the process is free. Are you thinking about that also? Which, that which once process? you make it part partisan, yeah. it will be free. The EC organizes platforms for them. They just go and speak. How and effective are those platforms? Mm. How much, Earlier on, I wanted to ask how effective has executive governance been at local level? Okay. How effective are those? All right. So, so, so let me, so, let me so, hear. So, so, yeah, let me yeah, learn. Think, Sam, think, let me learn. Yeah. What, what we need to accept mm. is that inclusiveness mm. is what this will bring. Thank it you. It will include Thank every you. Why, why, why in can't you see? Why can't you? Why can't you see good reason in the questions of doing away with the winner takes all and its dangers by doing an elective partisan elective. MMDC. Why can't you see that? The, the entire argument for years is based on some misclassification. So far, they've been comparing, you know, a political system like uh, Unigov and with a political system. What we are having here is not a political. We already have political parties. The only question here is whether local election, local government election should be done with politics that we already have. So the comparison itself is flawed. Yeah, now, it is not wrong. It is not wrong to belong to a political party. Neither is it wrong to be apolitical. What is wrong is the kind of politics we are playing. Mm. What is wrong is where people are losing jobs based on political lines, where businesses are collapsing based on political lines, where we are sharing national resources based on political That is what is wrong. And that cannot be said to be an inherent character of politics. So it is the kind of politics we are playing that we don't want to go down there. And that is what the CRC said. He says said. rules will be made. But that is what sorry, the CRC said. He me, says, that he is what the CRC he said. Says, look, consequential make, laws will be me, made <laughs> to make sure that what you are complaining are about will be taken care of. You probably realize that yes, what you are ahead, saying, I was going to say it. Mm. That is why the CRC said that, look, unless we correct our kind of politics, there shouldn't be a, a, a program for what? Bringing those politics down to the local government level. Look, we, 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 we are here in this country, okay, where we see that nothing happens without politics in this town. The question is, do you want that down there? Obviously so right not. There. So, so no, no, it's, you see, we are making a mistake. Mm. When you make it look like... It's people, already there, so this is the no, way to it, stop it. No, you see, the question is not whether people I mean, are political like down there or not. Like you, you know, that is not the issue. Everybody is, entitled to, is everybody is entitled to be political. You know, so the fact that I'm a, an assemblyman and I'm NDC or MPP and a, a assemblyman doesn't mean that the system is political. We know what we mean when we say things are political. It doesn't mean that, of course, we can have a chief justice who is a card bearing member of, and it's not unlawful, it's not wrong. We can have a, a what, a, 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 an EC who is a, a card bearing member of a political party. That is not wrong. So the issue down there is not that people should <coughs> not be political. The question is, you are setting up a system which is based on party lines. That is the issue. So I can be a, 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 what, a, a, an MPP person, mm -hmm. but when I'm a DC, I should be able to conduct the business and the systems at the lower level should be able to sustain an apolitical administration. You are saying and once I contest on the ticket of the party, I can't be, can be that it, kind of person. You cannot be. You know why? Because you are within the party system. And you'll be no, so I mean, let's face it. Why you know why <laughs> don't the argument is a party bad? No, no, no. Is the NDC bad? He just said he just said that an NDC. Sorry, sorry, sorry. There are different levels. Gentlemen, of can you allow him to also make his point? I think he's overseeing. Can you allow him to also make his point? You have your turn. Some mischief, some of these mischief. Yeah, go ahead. The point is that the point is that you just said that in Parliament MPs cannot even vote against the people when they are. That is that. So, so it is not because the person doesn't have conscience. It is because the system, the political party, binds you to a certain direction. But when you bring those things, so even though we have some brilliant people in parliament who think otherwise from the party line, but they cannot do it because the system is what holding you tight. 
That is exactly what we don't want down there. So when you are down there, you can be NDC, NPP, but no system is binding you to a particular direction. Look, there are so many people in this country who would like to work into local government and serve as assembly persons, who would like to do DCs and contest on their own merit and bring in quality Why leadership. Are they not there now? But you are forcing are them now Where? to join a political party elected? before they Where? did. Why have they not been in politics all this while? Why are they not there now? But are they being given? Have they, they been given? You are pointing the DC. You are pointing the DC. You are pointing the DC. How can you come? The DC is not appointed. So how can they come? Yeah, I'm sorry. You are pointing the DC. So how can the person come in? So there are people who right. have all it takes, mm. the willingness, the zeal, the capacity and everything to change some small things within our local government system. But they cannot go because the president is not appointing them. The president won't appoint such a person. He's appointing a party man. You do a research across the country. Who are those people we appoint as DCs? They're always party members, people who have contested MPs on party tickets if and have party lost. DC, if an MPP party DC does not do the things that will help the community, the next time he'll be voted out, right? But he does what his party says do, and that doesn't help the community. He'll be voted out. You. you are also being told, no, you're also no, being told no. that you there's opportunity the... for independent candidates. Yeah. Nobody yeah. stops them to go and contest oh, no, them. You see, there is a difference yeah. between yeah. there's a difference between and running as independent candidates in a in a among the political parties and also running as independent candidates <coughs> when there are no political parties. That's we cannot compare. These are two different systems. So we shouldn't say that because MPP is there, we you can run as independent candidates. What we want is that we don't want political parties there. We want people... You see, the advantages of even running this system is that the political parties, you claim that the people are already your members. Fine. If they do well, you can even bring them as MPs. And do, so it even prepares people for higher positions in the national central government. That is why so, you must <laughs> and build their capacity. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's, I'm sorry. You know, so if you don't so even conclude. allow people mm -hmm. to... So, by way of conclusion, all I'm saying is that we need to do a lot of things in our politics. Not political parties, but the kind of politics we, 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 we play. We need to correct them. And once those things are corrected, I don't think anyone will sit anywhere and say that, don't bring those things. If they are good uh, at the national level, then we can bring them at the local level. But for now, let the sanity prevail. Let quality prevail. Let people who are of metal, people who are of merit, people who are capable of changing the things that we have destroyed over the years. Mm. Let them take hold of small communities. Let them run those communities. Let them build themselves up for even the national and central government position. Mm. And at the end of the day, I'm sure, Honorable, you will be laughing and be clapping for this year. Okay. Okay. okay, so, 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 so now let's hear, let's hear you two uh, on your very substantive uh, question. And <laughs> once again, one of the people Suley Mana spoke to said he is MPP, but he... He mingles with all the people in the assembly. He's happy. Mm -hmm. They are okay with it. Mm -hmm. His fear is that once you make it partisan, they will come and conduct primaries. He is not educated. He will lose. He will not win the primaries because he feels they will put education criteria among other things, and he will lose out. What is wrong with? Isn't that wrong in itself? Because you are seeking to get certain competent people, and the party primaries will choose the competent ones to contest. I think the larger point that that individual was making is that when you introduce the parties at the local level, particularly at the level of assemblymen, unit committee members, and of course the DC level, you end up having local interests being subordinated to the larger national party interest in terms of shipping people to line. We all know what happens in this country. I mean. We know how when the parties run their primaries, some individuals from within the national could go and fudge things at the local level, and then the local, I mean, the local preference can be put aside, and then, I mean, we all know this is, we should not really pretend that they don't exist. These are our experiences. Our experiences must guide our way forward. And so let's be realistic about that. But the more important thing is that both Kweku Bako and, and Honorable uh, Yawawea Samoa agreed that at the top level, the parties, and the, the way partisan politics is played, is a problem there. What they are saying is that Structural there is a cancer in our body politic. Now, from a medical point of view, when there is a cancer in a person's body, do you cure it and prevent it from spreading, or do you spread it? What they are saying is that there is a cancer, we notice it, but let's spread it to the entire system, then the system will be okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that, that that kind of thinking is problematic. And then there is this few, I mean, when, uh, when Kweku started earlier, we talked about NDC's credibility crisis. I think that taking the position and learning later to change it should not be seen as credibility crisis. It should be seen as willingness to admit, improve, and put up an alternative. Mm. Willingness to be open. And in fact, that's what the quality is about.
Oh, Please don't intervene. Yeah. Now, mm. if you can recall, mm. prior to 2016 election, the MPP <laughs> agreed that election should be held in November. <laughs> At all the committee meetings, they agreed. The hands are there. I mean, Kweku has a lot of documents here. You could refer to them. They agreed. But when they came to the plenary, they refused. Nobody talked about credibility crisis for them. Even Kweku himself said he was for yes. And then now he's changing his vote to, or he was for, he was for no, 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 but no, he's yes, no, now yes. I mean, and that is not, I don't see that as credibility. But does, it, does that mean that you have so, abandoned your argument that this should be deferred and it should be abandoned? Because he concluded no, on that. No, he he has not been, he yes, and, came, and still asked for I, deferment. I think they should defer yeah. this project. Yeah. They should that's defer the project. That's how he concluded. That's my view. That's how he concluded. But I'm sure nobody will agree to that. The expenditure and all those things they've done. But the truth of the matter, if you ask me, both sides of the coin. Look, uh, but the voting is an is opportunity for options. So yes. let the people no, vote so rather than say. It's a personal view. Okay, yeah. personal view is that it should be deferred. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm um, no, no, yeah, to, let, uh, let him let him finish up. We're we're almost uh, out yeah. of time now. Now let's agree mm -hmm. that parties are not the only thing there is to society. The larger project we have is nation building, and I think we need to keep that in mind. This country called Ghana did not emerge endogenously. Mm. It was endogenously created, mm. and therefore what it meant was that. Sometime in our national life, we were put together by some people. Mm. We need to build the nation and allow us to be able to rise above the primordial and ethnic feelings. And that necessarily means that the things that divide us, the things that make us acrimonious, the things that necessarily incite ethnic tension must be reduced. And one of those things is needless competition. Needless competition. In the repertoire of institutions available for building democracy, competition is not the only thing. You have consensus building, you have cooperation, you have competition, and you have others. Why do we think that making this process partisan competition is the only way out? At the local level, there are retired teachers, okay. retired nurses, mm. retired doctors, retired engineers, all of whom <coughs> have been in the public service or in private okay. service all their life and right. have never been tagged partisan wise. Okay. Please give me two minutes. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And I'm sorry. They want to I'm, offer I'm something sorry. to their local government system. Right. They don't want I'm, to do I'm that sorry. on partisan I'm sorry. lines. I'm they want to do that as yeah. individual Ghanaians who have achieved something. Thank you, something. Dr. Professor Thank you, Dr. Professor White. They want to offer something. Thank you, Dr. Professor White. We have run out of time. Um, I don't know, Kweku. We, we actually have run out of time. Okay. Look, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, all of you. Um, so there is a no, there is a yes, yes. there is a yes, but defer, there is a no. Okay, thank you very it's much, gentlemen. Uh, we'll take a that. break here. Yeah. When, when we return, Samson, yes, I will come back. When, when we return, of course, when we return, I'll share with you your views on the, this particular subject and then we'll proceed to discuss the budget. We'll be right back. Thank you. <laughs>